Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Hello Rockford, uh, Pastor Everett. I wanted to talk to you tonight for just a few minutes. I, I hope you're, uh, you're, you're having a good day. I hope that you're uh, staying safe. And uh, uh, I, I want to look at a, a, a really a verse we find in John 15, chapter 15, verse 21. It's the verse I want to talk about, but I want to read uh, to you just some scripture, if that's okay. Uh, it, out of, I'm going to be reading from the King James Version, John 15, verses 20 through 24, and we'll come back and talk about verse 21. Uh, very relevant uh, portion of scripture. So let's just read John 15, verse 20. It says, Remember the word that I said unto you. I almost think it's like a parent. <laughs> What did I tell you? What did I tell you? Yeah, as a parent, that's a, that's a good parent joke, uh, especially when we got all our kids hanging around so much nowadays. Uh, but what did I tell you? I told you before. <laughs> I told you a thousand times. If I told you one time, I told you a thousand times. But remember the word that I spoke unto you. Remember the word that I spoke. Jesus says, remember the word that I spoke unto you. How important to you is the Word of God. How important is the Word in your life? And I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's way more important than what you, what you've, what you even uh, think it is. It's so important because, I don't know about you, but I can still remember some of the words that were spoken to me when I was very young. Uh, and, and I'm not very old yet, <laughs> but, but I'm going to tell you that some of the words that have been spoken, those, those words are weighty in our life. And those words help to form us and shape us. And sometimes the way we were formed and shaped by words that were spoken to us have, have really had some uh, bad effect on our life and on our relationships. Jesus then says something. He says, the servant is not greater than his Lord. And I, I, I want to pause right there because Lord right there is not saying uh, Jesus, because you know when we get saved, Jesus becomes the Lord of our life. The, he becomes the one who owns us, and we we give our life to Him. That's what happens. But Jesus is not saying that in this in this verse. He said the servant is not greater than his Lord, and and so sometimes the things that are Lord in our life are not supposed to be Lord. Uh, we could say it a little different. Sometimes. The God in our life is not God, the big G God, not, not the creator of heaven and earth, not the, the one who created all things. That, that, the, the God who guides us is not that God, the big God. It's some other God. And, and so then he says, if they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Uh, if they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake. I'm going to come back to that in just a second. Because they know not him that sent me. If I had, in verse 22, if I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin, no hiding, no covering for their sin. Because it was revealed when Jesus came. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And that's, that's very powerful because Jesus comes into my heart. Therefore, I become the light of the world. So we are the light of the, of the world. It goes on to say in other places that a city set on the hill cannot be hid. So we have to remember that when someone turns the light on for us, we are then responsible, amen? Responsible for the light. He that, he that hateth me, hate, hateth my father also, he says. If, if I had not done among them the works which n not another man did, they had not had sin. But now they have both seen and hated both me and my Father. Amen. So let me, let me, let me just pray for us. Father, we pray that you would make this word come alive, that you would transform our heart, transform our mind, transform what we think about, Father. Help us to see with new eyes. Help us to hear with new ears. And help us to be who you've called us to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And I like this portion of scripture because it really talks 
uh, about the they's. And, and uh, I, I like to, I, I wrote in my Bible, I don't know if you write in your Bible, but I highlighted the they's in, this, in this, uh, these verses and I counted them. And you know how many, how many there are? There's, there's 10 they's there. And those days, uh, 10 is actually the number of the test. You know, we, we have 10 commandments. Uh, we also have uh, that, that Moses gave us. We also have uh, the tithe, the 10% of, uh, of our money that we bring in. And, you know, God asks us to test him with our money uh, when we give our, our tithe. And, and, and it's very powerful to me that there are 10 days, which really represents uh, the test. I think, I think all of us have a they in our life, uh, uh, some days more than others. And, uh, you know, we always say this too, and we don't think about it much, but we say, you know, somebody should really mow the lawn. <laughs> some, uh, they, or they should mow the lawn. They should sweep the floor. They should really pick up the trash. They should uh, rearrange, you know, they should change the lighting. They should, they should, they should. And, and all of us have a they, okay? And the they... Whoever that they is, is, is a test for you. Actually, they, bring, they reveal something to us about ourself. And, and, and it's, that's, okay, that's, that's, that's a little too deep. It's a Thursday night. I know this is, this is a, a small teaching, but, but <laughs> they just need to be nice. <laughs> and I, I, wonder, <laughs> I wonder how nice we are when, when we are, are tested, right? Uh, the Bible says in, in uh, uh, John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, To as many as received him, to, to them gave he the power. So we have the they and the them. And I, I think we should look at, at, am I a they or am I a them? And, 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 and in, in between that, we need to come to a conclusion, all right? Actually, I think if we're really honest, we get stuck. We get stuck uh, in an event, in a circumstance, in a in a mindset, in a in a heart posture, in a in a in a in a rut in our life. And and God never called us to be in a rut because of they. He called us to come to a place where we would be, we would be transformed by the renewing of our mind, which comes from the Word of God. And it washes our mind and causes us to become, not brainwashed, but it causes us to become a new person. Amen? If Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. But verse 21 says something that I wanted to come back to. It says, for, for is, let me read it to you. It says, but these things will they do unto you, for my namesake, and I, I was struck with that 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 word namesake, and I I remembered something. Uh, as a matter of fact, I, I thought about this verse. kept me up most of the night, uh, and I, I thought about this verse. For for they did it for his namesake, and I remembered my own sin. I remembered my own transgression. I, I remembered that uh, I had to get down on my knees and say, Lord, forgive me for my sin and I, and and I transferred my sin from my own self to Jesus Christ that that transfer happened and 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 my bible says and I don't know if your bible says the same thing but it says it says that Jesus came to die for the sin of the whole world not not just me and and so I become so focused on me that I forget that they have the same opportunity that I had and I found out in this verse that when I when when you really break this out a little bit you'll see that Jesus is they so when they do something to you Jesus is saying that's me and so when I transfer what they did because because I'm gonna tell you this you, you will always remain stuck until you find the win, right? It's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win the argument or I'm not going to stop arguing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to remain bitter until I find a reason to make somebody feel like I feel so that I, I can then be set free. And that, that whole line of thinking is wrong. You'll, you'll never get better. You'll never feel better. You'll always remain where you always are until you find the win. And I'm going to say this. I come to church 
and I, or I turn on the worship music, I worship God because I love Him. And I love Him because He first loved me is true. And I love Him because He has taken my sin from me because of what He did for me. And, and I, I love Him not for what He's going to give me, but because I have experienced that love in my life. Uh, they are Jesus. And so if I, if I hate them or th what they did or what they didn't do, if I find myself stuck hating them, hating the theys, I, I'm finding myself hating Jesus because the same God that saved me is the same God that will save them or ha they have the same opportunity to be saved as me. So I must think of the theys as Jesus. Then I will see the win. Then I will be set free. Then I will be transformed. Then I will rise up. Amen? And that truth is so powerful. It's so powerful that if you really think about it, you could go back and pray about it and say, God, and I'm going to tell you right now, I feel the conviction of the Holy, the Holy Ghost right there. We, we, we go back and pray about it. Say, God, I'm sorry. Because isn't it true that love always gives something that it doesn't deserve? It gives the recipient something they don't deserve. Love gives the recipient, whoever they are, whoever receives the love, gets what they don't deserve. So then I can say, God, I thank you that you gave me what I didn't deserve. God, I give them what they don't deserve. And that, my friends, is the transformation from the they to the them. I become a them. I, became, I become a Christian. I become a person who will be who God really has called us to be. Amen? Amen. God is good. I, I, let me just pray for you right there. Father, in Jesus' name, I speak to everything in our life that has got us stuck. I speak to that right now in Jesus' name. I ask, Lord, that you transform the way we think about it so that we would rise up and be who you called us to be in this situation. And I thank you, Lord, for all you're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My challenge to you tonight is that you would really go Go and uh, go deeper. Go a little deeper. Say, Jesus, I, I need it. Open my eyes to see. Open my ears to hear. Help me to be it. Amen. What you've called us to be. Uh, we, really, uh, we really love you guys. We appreciate you guys. Uh, we want to connect with you. So if you would go to my breakthrough, that's all one word, dot online, you can, that'll, that'll take you right to our web, our web page. You can uh, connect with us uh, by liking us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have lots of teaching. We're, we're live on, uh, on Sundays at 10 a.m. right here in Rockford, Illinois, and also on Thursdays at 6, 6 p.m. We're also live, and then we, we, we we're, we're also have other, other times that we've been doing uh, a, a live message to you. Uh, but we want, to, we want to connect with you. Uh, we want you to partner with us. Help us to take messages like this all around the world. We're so excited about all that God is doing not just here, amen, but in you and through you. And, and we want to partner with you so that we can go all around the world. So God bless you. Have a great night.